Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today. Today is day three of Jam Pack July. If you have no idea what Jam Pack July is, it is where I make a video every single day in July. Uh, if you haven't checked out the past couple days, make sure you go check it out. The Reptile Room Tour is lit. And today is Tuesday, so I'm going to be filming Q&A Tuesday. How this format works is that you guys have to leave your comments down below this video and next video on Tuesday, a week from today, I will make another video answering several, if not all, of the questions from today's video. So once again, leave your comments down below with any questions you have and you want me to answer. I'll leave your name and then the question you have on the screen so you guys can check it out. However, uh, I mentioned it on the live stream that I did and I don't think many people got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't get any questions. I got a couple good video suggestions, so I thank you for that, but uh, there was no real questions, so I had to reach out to my buddy Hunter and uh, ask him what questions he had for me. He asked two simple questions. One was about monitors and one was about dart frogs, so why don't we dive into them? The first question about monitors was basically that I was talking a lot about the monitor in my live stream and in the reptile room tour, so what kind of drove me to like monitors so much? And my answer to that is relatively simple. Honestly, I think they're one of the most primitive looking reptiles out there. Obviously, they're not the most primitive. The most primitive reptile is actually the Tuatara, if you guys didn't know. The monitors are very intelligent. They're, in my eyes, just shy of things like crocodilians and whatnot. Then it'd be monitors, varanids, and that is something that is really, really cool to me. Bowser definitely recognizes when I walk in the room. He knows my routine when I'm like shaking the cup for crickets. He knows that it's feeding time. Whenever I do that, even if I'm across the room and he can't see me, He'll be sitting at the gate looking, trying to get at me and uh, get those crickets. So that's probably the number one feature is just their pure primitiveness, I guess is what I'd call it. And then the second aspect is that they're just really cool. Um, you can have massive habitats for them. They will use every inch of it. Another thing that monitors have going for them is the extreme variation of both size and colors. You have the world's smallest monitor and that is the Varanus Sparnus or the Dampier Peninsula monitor which is only about 16 grams and is a whopping 23 centimeters from snout to tip of the tail. 23 centimeters is probably about that big so you can just imagine how tiny that really is. Then you have the world's largest monitor or heaviest monitor which is the Varanus Komodoensis or the Komodo Dragon or you have what some people believe is the longest monitor Monitor, and that is the Croc Monitor or the Varanus Salvadori. So there is massive variation in the size and then you have things like the tree monitors from Southeast Asia and like Papua New Guinea and whatnot which can range in the whole gamut of rainbow colors from the Cordo which is kind of like a tealy green, you got the blue trees, you got the green trees, you got yellow tree monitors, you got Varanus Obor which is the torch monitor. There's so much variation in monitors that it is honestly flabbergasting and that is why I like them so much. So thanks Hunter for that question and we'll answer your next question because uh, you are the only friend that gave me a question to answer. So uh, yeah. The second question that Hunter asked was what do I like more about dart frogs? The frogs themselves or the enclosures that you can make for them? And honestly, I think personally, I have to say the enclosures, um, the frogs themselves are just Eh, so close, but they're just not quite up there with the enclosures that you can create for them. Whether you're using the kind of fake background material where it's like the coconut corn and you use silicone to put it together, or you use my preferred method, which is the dry lock, that is one of my favorite things to do. And just the process is so cool that you really create a habitat for the animals that you're putting in there. In my case, you're not building the glass tank, but you are putting in your hard work into making something really, really cool. Like the tank behind me here, that is by far my favorite vivarium in this room. And it is just incredible to see the lush plant growth, the moss covering everything, and so many different species of rare plant that are hard to find in Canada growing very well in there. So I guess that kind of answers the question. I I'm a plant guy myself. I really like the rare, weird plants that we have going on. And uh, I spent 
far too much money on plants uh, when I can, <laughs> so that's probably part of my problem. But that also is what I like about the hobby. Of course, you could have dart frogs in a non-living setup, but honestly, I don't see the point of having them in something like that because they're really not gonna thrive in something that is artificial like they would in a naturalistic vivarium. So thank you, Hunter, for your questions today. Hopefully, if you guys watched this video, you guys know what to do now. Leave your comments in the comment section down below so that way I can answer your questions and give you a shout out on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A Tuesday. It will probably be shorter than some of the other ones. And look who decided to join us for the outro. So I wanna thank you guys all for watching. If you liked the video, drop a like down below. Let me know in the comment section what your answers would be to the questions that Hunter asked because I think it would be cool to get a discussion started in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of Jam Pack July, be sure to click that subscribe button and click the notification bell right next to it. That way you guys will have some idea of what's going on and you'll get notified every time I post a video. So I want to thank you guys all for watching and we'll catch you tomorrow.